All right, now it is time to get the power head off. So, power head's not entirely easy. It ain't all that hard. Basically, you're just pulling a whole bunch of bolts at this point. So, see these two halves? It'll make more sense when I get them apart. But they basically got to go... Come out. Inside of there, there's another screw. You need to pull that out. That'll release the body of the thing from the little rotating assembly. I turn this back over. You see what I did there? Anyway, when I turn it back over, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Screw out the rest of the way. There's our little uh, rotating pin. Oh, one nice thing about outboards is they always come with bonus stuff. So this has this little chain attached. Uh, two links, zinc plated. That kind of sucks. But this little uh, thing there, that looks like stainless. So hang on to that. Throw the chain away. Might use these little links or something. Not sure. See if I can get them off. Yep, piece gig. There's my little bonus chain. Maybe I'll turn it into a wallet chain. Go 90 selling me. All right, so, see this bar? It's got a half ring on it, connects the two halves together, and allows this a safe way to pivot, if you will. So what we gotta do, hopefully, my goal here, which doesn't look like it's gonna happen, was to take these screws out and then be able to remove this, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to just slide that down. So that's out, but not really a surprise. Let me uh, fire up the impact here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out, well not really first, but next I suppose. Pull out the screws there, there's one on each side. These are the screws that attach the inner half. That one. There's another one back there. A little hard to reach. At least with that setup. That's out. Now I'm gonna pull that screw out. Impact is not a screw to, tool to use here. But it breaks it loose for me. You have another one right there. That's for the uh, upper motor mount. Pull that out. I don't know if you saw it slip, but that's why the impact's not really ideal choice. I have a butterfly impact wrench too. Works quite well on those kind of things. So now I'm gonna get the big screwdriver attachment, which fits into the sides, and I'll go through Pull all those out of there. I'm going to start with the top one up here, which you can barely see, but it's up there. So 
that's most of the halves. So there's going to be a couple more. Got one right there. Looks like a 3 8. There should be one on the back side. These guys for the lower mounts. It'll make more sense when I get it apart. Those are out. Now the other ounce. Leave that as a nine sixteenths. Nope, not even close. Five eighths. So it's pretty loose at this point. Still got more to go. That should kind of be it. Pull that out. Just be sure. So forgot about the other side, top rubber mount. Pull that guy out. And you can see the power head dropping inside now. So at this point, the halves should come apart. Yep. Let's see what we got. Whole pile of thing. Uh, this is the lower rubber mount. It went through there. And it looks like I forgot something. Surprise, right? Oh, that rotating assembly I was talking about? That's what it does. So it connects the two upper halves together and then pivots back and forth on this thing. You can't even see what I'm doing. Anywho, so it loops up there, pivots back and forth. So I get that out. Looks like the only thing left is the rubber mount. For that, which is this guy, I'm using my pliers. It's a little big for him, but surprisingly, where it's fine. I should have done this first, realistically, but whatever. It's all good. Now, I don't think they make this rubber mount anymore, so you want to be a little careful with it. Not rubber mount, excuse me, exhaust tube. But, anyhow, it's off there. Now, our power head can come out. Now there's the other side. So to finish getting this apart, which is what I need, probably use these halves too. But anyway, bolt there, there, and the ones up top. I'll show you that they look like. Those guys. That'll get our pivot section out of there. At this point, the engine kind of makes sense. Clean up all our bonus parts. So, I'm going to get the uh, lower foot off the power head now. So, for some reason I had some camera footage problems again. I uh, didn't lose much, but <clears throat> still got to figure out what's going on. So what I did already was pulled the cotter pins and washers off of the uh, shift rod here and slid off the linkage. That's all there is to that one really. But get that out of the way. I have an impact wrench with a extension and a 3-8 socket. 
So I'm going to use it to pull off the rubber mounts. Go ahead and go the right way. See how tiny those things are? Six horsepower is twice the size. I always thought that was funny. Anywho, press this off. Now, I couldn't get the impact wrench right on there, so I had this long extension to go down to the base. You kind of see what I do there. It speeds things up. I just flip it over. One bolt left. Looks like a larger size than our others. I don't remember that being like that. Oh, foot's out. Your foot is off, rather. Pull it out of there. That's what that looks like. It seals pretty easy. It's going to rotate her on out. I keep saying seal. I don't know why. Anyway, so the shift rod right there. I guess that's a seal, but that's a bushing. But anyway, so that's uh, it. That is our 9.5 horsepower powerhead. That's all that is left. So, what I find out about the 9.5s, unlike most other outboards, if you want to remove the powerhead, you unbolt it and lift it off. Granted, you have carburetor, fuel lines, electrical, that kind of stuff attached, but still, you can pull the powerhead off entirely. With these 9.5s, you're taking the engine apart to get to the powerhead. It's a little weird. But they're good motors. Not uh, You don't see too many of them anymore. I think just because they're a little different looking. They're very low profile. I think it's made for being able to cast off the back of the boat for fishermen. So, anyhow. I'll save this powerhead in case I need it. And then uh, sell it when the engine is uh, good and going. But it's a pretty good powerhead, I think. Well, anyhow. Stay tuned for my next video. And I have no idea what that'll be, but it should be a uh, should be a good one. So, have a good one.